In this how-to video, I will go over the files accompanying chapter 11 of writing software. Chapter 11 is a massive walkthrough of the thought process through designing a project, a massive case study. The chapter provides a set of files describing the various iterations, all in all there's about a dozen iterations describing the design of the project. For each iteration, there's a pair of files, a project file and an Excel file. They are numbered exactly as the book is using as far as the iteration numbers. Here's what that folder looks like. For each iteration, you see a Microsoft project file and Excel file. There's also two project analysis files and a readme file describing all of these files. In fact, every one of the folders for the support files for writing software has a readme file. For each iteration, you have a Microsoft project file. The project file is there to model the network, to schedule the start and completion dates, to find the actual start and completion date of activities, and to calculate the float. Let me show you what that actually looks like. It's a simple project file. Practically, for the project design, the only information we want out of it is the finish date for the end value charts and the float for the various risk calculations. For each iteration, the bulk of the analysis is done in Excel. Each one of those Excel files has a summary table that shows the duration, the cost, and efficiency, but also kind of like show your work, the staffing distribution chart, the end value chart, and how everything was produced. Here is the uh, file for the normal solution. We can see we have the planning tab for calculating the earned value chart. It's basically time versus planned earned value. We have the earned value chart. We have the staffing distribution chart. And please see my other how-to videos on how to produce these charts. We can see the total cost for the project the direct cost for the project. In highlight, you see the activities and the resources that contributed for direct cost. You see also average staffing, average developers, and also average staffing in percentage of peak staffing. Then there's a summary table that shows the pertinent numbers for the iteration, the total cost, the duration, the average staffing, efficiency. And all of this is based on the calculation in the previous uh, tabs. The most important files in Chapter 11 are a pair of analysis files that capture the, the numbers of the various uh, solutions. And those two files are largely parameterized, so you can actually use them as templates. And so there's a place to put the various coefficients, and the rest of the calculation is done based on those parameters. The project time cost file captures the time cost curve, the throughput analysis, efficiency, and so on, and even does the death zone up until the risk calculation portion of chapter 11. Here's that file. You have here the various iterations. You have the duration, total cost, and direct cost for those, and that's calculated from the individual Excel files I just showed you. And you see here the discrete time cost curve. You also have here the trend line that Excel added, including the equations for the various lines. And again, everything here is done. You only put the information once in this table. And even this is coming out of that table. All we're adding here is the equation for the trend line. You even have here the text version of those equations. But you can also in Excel just copy the text from here if you want. Once you have the equations, you can capture the coefficients for the direct cost, indirect cost, and total cost. And those coefficients are what drives the plot over here. And so what we have here is the duration in time. And the various curves are simply using the coefficients. And so all you need to do is plug here the coefficients for your curve, you would get your time cost curve. If you have the total cost curve, you can calculate the, and plot the death zone. The death zone is simply the area under the total cost curve. And again, everything is parameterized here. 
You also have the project plans required to produce the throughput analysis. Here the throughput analysis comparing the various shallow S-curve of the solutions. Here is replacing the S-curves with the linear trend line and their equations. So you can actually even do numerical throughput analysis. And finally, there's a plot of the efficiency of the various solutions. So all of that is in the project time cost Excel file. There's also a matching file for system risk analysis. It calculates the risk for all the various solutions, rebuilds the time cost curve because the direct cost is not known at the decompression point dot you have to uh, kind of calculate. It calculates the various uh, risk curve and then models it. Let's examine that file. The, the right side portion of that file contains tabs for the various solutions. Each one of them is a table that shows how to calculate the risk for that particular solution. The left tabs capture the data. And so what you have here is the various risk from those tabs. So you only calculate it in one place. Everything is just copied over here automatically. What you see here is the original risk curve and the direct cost curve. Recall from writing software that you can also model the various risk curves. And so first we have to adjust the risk curve because of the problem that the activity risk is skewed higher because the floats are not uniformly spread. And so you can compare here the unadjusted risk, the raw risk versus the adjusted one. Once you have that, you can add the equation for the risk curve very similar to the time cost curve. And here you can plot the adjusted risk curves and the direct cost curve. The problem is that the direct cost is not known at the decompression point. Writing software explains how using simple heuristic you can actually calculate the direct cost you're actually missing. In this case, we're adding the cost of two developers over the time span of the decompression. With that in place, you can actually rebuild the entire time cost curve. You assume that the indirect cost doesn't change, you can actually extrapolate its values. And then you have a new equation for the direct, indirect, and total cost curve. With that in place, you can paste here the coefficients for the various curves. And the spreadsheet will simply plot for you the risk-adjusted time cost curve. Much the same way, you can plot the risk curve and the direct cost curve. And again, all of the coefficients here are only placed once. And you can see it's... Uh, coming out of the other tab in the spreadsheet. There's uh, two summary charts over here. This one shows the exclusion and inclusion zone assuming 0 0.3 and 0 0.75 for the risk. And so you can see here, again, the plot of the risk based on the coefficients. You can see some interesting points. These were done using a solver. Once you have the equation, you can actually ask a reverse question, such as, at what value of time will I get risk of 0.75? So if you go to the depth tab, there's a solver over there. And I could say, please change, uh, give me the value of 0 0.75 on that cell by changing this cell. And if I ask it to solve it, it finds 9.49 as a value that give me 0.75. Much the same, we can ask it what is the maximum value of risk, what risk, what value of time gives me risk of 0.5, what's the minimum value of risk, and so on. And this is just a visualization of those points as well as the various project design solutions. Here's the same with additional points. Here you have the decompression target. This is done using the second derivative technique which actually only appears in chapter 12, not in chapter 11, but I have it here on a chart as a bonus chart as well. You also have the point of minimum direct cost. And again, this is done all based on the coefficients of the direct cost curve. For more on these ideas and techniques, see writing software.